Greetings and welcome to Old Drunken Discography, where old friends, fans come together to BS, argue, occasionally, not really, agree, and discuss an artist. This week and these weeks, we're discussing Red Hot Chili Peppers. Joining with me is Tim. Hi. Somewhere. I don't know My what the orientation is. Uh, Hannah. Hey, hey. Ed. Hello. He's somewhere. <laughs> And as always, your host, Jason. Remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment what you think our rankings are at, and tell us why my rankings, obviously, are better than everyone else's. And that, oh. by the way, to this point, is the best album that the Red Hat Chili Puppets have released. See, as every time I let unlimited... somebody else do the intro, they just got to make it all biased. See, every time. Absolutely. Every time. You have to. That's the whole opportunity, Right. And I mean, we're talking about unlimited love here when we get to it. You know, they're twelve. If you've missed albums. our previous, if you missed the previous videos, here's Bill's ranking. Tell him how mm -hmm. wrong he is for having Mother's Milk in ninth place. Something had to go there. It like, didn't have to be that. It could have been one hot minute. It could have been anything else. <laughs> nah, it's Mother's Milk. It's gonna be that low. Damn. I mean, All right. We, got two, seven, we are. We are back on the Fruchante train here. Yeah, someone who, needed a paycheck. Who wants to talk about unlimited love first? I'll go quick. Ow. My foot. Okay. <laughs> um, when this album came out, I was all hyped about it. Black Summer came out. I was like, oh, this is dope. I enjoy it. Then Anthony started singing like in a weird Irish voice at first. It's kind of weird, but I'm going to let this slide. Um, I enjoyed the tune. It was good. Let's it was give good that scene. one a slap. It, yeah, that was. <laughs> we can't that let was... that thing slide. Okay. <laughs> uh, All right. Yeah, that was, it was pretty cheesy. You hold um, it. Pretty but cheesy. It, I just like to see the guys back together. That video was awesome. It was great. Uh, and I can back. appreciate that. Sure. The the guitar in it reminded me of the '90s kind of feel to it. It had like a weird kind of you know um, kind of '90s rock feel i don't know it was weird i enjoy listening to it it was great um as a single uh this album i really haven't i don't know like the other pepper albums seem besides the ones with josh like see like jason was talking about earlier like it seems like you have you build a history with these kind of bands you know like you you remember when an album comes out that that happened when that album came out or this, i listened to with that person when i was you know this these yeah. two last albums haven't had that for me yet like i don't, I don't have that kind of connection to them yet they didn't um, link to a core memory <laughs> no a lot of the pepper songs and albums do you know like if you you know uh anything from their discography i can remember a time when where i was somewhere doing something listening to that track nostalgia is a um, drug <laughs> it is <laughs> so black summer good lead single i thought it was good to see the guys back together um aquatic mouth dance you know weird but I enjoy it. That was a funky one. I, I really enjoy that one. Uh, not the one. Okay, so it's weird that y'all talking about whales and fish and all that stuff because that reminds me of like whales, like underwater sounds that whales make. <laughs> so, see, that's what I'm saying. Like now I'm like, where is it? It has to be somewhere. Does, this, does it mean the dolphin, does the dolphin need album? to show up? I don't know, but it, it reminds me of underground. It like. Does mammal underwater mammal sounds or something i don't know sonar stuff um poster child was fun um going down the list here um yeah see there's not that many of these that i can say are like on my playlist all the time mm -hmm. veronica was good let him cry was okay it had, the he uh the heavy wing was was dope that was definitely a that was a Hen hendrix nod in there for sure um and it was uh, you can tell john influences that we we're talking about earlier with with the funk with p funk but also hendrix is huge you know in, in his background yeah and, especially the, the, way, the traffic song or whatever it was called yeah yeah the yeah, one-way traffic. cross town traffic yeah exactly so it's uh it it was fun to kind of hear him do that um do that angle uh again not an album that i'm like emotionally connected to uh, i haven't had any kind of memories with it other than me well, me and my wife went to see him when this album came out so that's a, that that's a nice memory um but 
other than that, I thought it was a good album. I could follow I'll that pick one. up on that. I, you know, I'm not going to take too long <laughs> either. Um, yeah, it, Frusciante's back, and Frusciante is the light in this band. And my my overriding thought while listening to this, so when it came out, I heard Black Summer, and I wasn't like. Yeah, I, I'm so off the train at this point. I don't care that it they've got a new album coming out. And yeah, I thought the single was kind of cheesy. It's kind of reminiscent of Scar Tissue. Yeah. Scar Tissue Part 2, maybe? And um, yeah, so I wasn't really like excited for this album. I did eventually, like uh, I was on a road trip with a buddy, and we put it on, and we made it about eight songs in. Um, everything here, like they've already done on Stadium Arcadium, Californication, or Blood Sugar Sex Magic, and they've done it better on all three of those albums. Now, Frusciante is back, and Frusciante continues to be, um, interesting to listen to. But the, the thing that really struck me about this album was just how much in the box Tony K is. Yes, yes. Yeah, every song. It's like, you know, they start off musically, and I'm like, oh, this might be a good one. And, you know, that's interesting. And then as soon as the vocals come in, I'm like, oh, no, they've done this before. And... uh I, you know, it, this one and the next one, I think, are interesting. And I think it might even be interesting. Like, you know, if people are enjoying this Red Hot Chili Peppers uh, playlist, which you can find down below if you haven't found it already, which, of course, you have because you're watching this. Um, but if you want to keep Obviously. that going, Patreon or something, we'll knock this and the next album down to like a good 15 album track thing. They were all recorded at the same time during the quarantine. And you could tell they definitely took the same approach that they did to Stadium Arcadium, mm -hmm. where they're going to try just, you know, throwing everything at the wall. And, yeah, I mean, there's there's stuff here to like. I would imagine that if this is your first Chili Peppers album, it's probably really good. But where are we at now? 10, 11, 12? 13 maybe 12, 12 13 yeah like yeah, there's nothing there's nothing here for us that have heard it already um yeah you can find some interesting stuff maybe maybe even find a couple songs that you're like oh yeah you know i would definitely need more time with this and the next album much like ed you know i don't have those visceral connections to these yet either like i do with some of the albums in the past um but I don't see myself getting it because there's just nothing new here. It's also very clean. Like there is no, there is no like uh, nothing, nothing that symbolizes the times. You know, it, it's just Again, at this point, like we're yacht rock of the 21st century. Yeah, this exactly. is some easy listening. Let's go grocery shopping and hang out in a dental waiting room music. Yeah, yeah. I'll I'll follow that one up. Um, Black Summer, it was in Fortnite. The first time I heard it, we were driving around in a car, and I said, what the fuck is this? Sounds like some bootleg chili pepper shit. And then I found out it was the chili peppers. Um, when I was listening to it for this review, my wife said, I shouldn't have to suffer too. And what kind of hokey-ass accent is that? So, um, Here Ever After, it was... Good Shout music. out to your wife for that one. That's that's legit. She's like, is that going to make the show? I was like, oh, yes, because I was typing it up. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, <sighs> this one, it was good musically. That's that's all I asked for the Peppers, just a little energy. Um, aquatic Mouth, too much Ketis, not enough Flea Fushante on it. Not the One is, by the way, trash. Poster Child was pretty cool. Had a weird nighttime jazz feel to it. I kind of dug it. Great Apes, meh. Natural, slow and boring. She's a lover, dumb. These are the ways. Boring at first, but I like the change. It has some interesting things going on, and Chad is actually doing some shit. 
I'll, Tom. I'll throw out that I thought she's a lover might be the highlight of the album. Oh, again, yeah, I, I thought, I thought she's a lover. I thought she's a lover was a good one too. Ugh. Yeah. I, I mean, again, I need more time with the rest of the tracks, the whole yeah. thing, but that's one that kind of jumped out at me. Like, okay, yeah, there is some decent stuff on here. What you thinking? Uh, bastards of light. I missed this one and white braids because I was buying tickets to see the Menzingers. So they just kind of played in the background, didn't pay much attention to it. On one way traffic, so bad, it's good. They should have put this one on canteen. Veronica, just bad. It's like little bits and parts of things just crammed together in one song. It doesn't really work. Let him cry was fine. Heavy wing, pepper fatigue has beyond kicked in. It's just the same damn thing over and over again. And the closing track, wow. Surprise. It's a boring-ass closing track. This album is 95% boring. I like maybe two or three songs, but for the most part, it's just boring. It's not bad. It's just boring. Kind of like Tim yeah. said, we've been here. We've done that. Also, like, you think their age has something to do with it? I mean, these guys are clearly... Nope. No, because I think C they're... A, bad religion. It's like... Flea's willing to experiment, and Frusciante's clearly willing to experiment. I think the other two wheels on that train, though, are, are stuck. Not. Yeah. 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 They do the same thing I mean, every time, where the other two do. might try new things. But yeah. they're still within a limited box based on what else is being played. Right. Yeah, and like, I mean, it does repeat. get better with the, with the follow-up, I think. It's just that this I, one... Yeah, I, I think we're all going to agree with that. Yeah. yeah. Which... Which is going to beg the question of why they chose this playlist. Because, like, mm -hmm. I mean, you can almost I, say they're trolling their fans with this. Like, yeah, think you, you think this one's good, but wait till you hear the rest of this section. That's a good idea. We'll do a Patreon video where we take Unlimited Love and Canteen and try to get it down to a is it 17 track Yeah, pick a number, but a reasonable album. Yeah. 17, because they both uh, will fall the same. They're both 17. Right. That's going to be hard because I I actually see the reason why they picked which songs for which album. And and I'll get to that. I'll get to that. But okay. I see uh, I need more I time see... with them. I mean, I can I can kind of see it, but I can't I really see like the two sides it's not clear the yet. Point. If it was a double yeah. disc, if it was a double disc with like this being the moon and the other being the sun or whatever, I could see it working kind of. Yeah, I think that was what originally had been planned. And then they ultimately split it into two separate albums rather than having a double album being like the light and the dark. Well, it's two double albums, technically. It, yeah, because there's a lot so on like, here. Yeah, there's a lot. Um, of... Yeah, like Stadium Arcadium, they recorded three albums worth. They whittled it down to two. I'm with you. They recorded two albums worth. They whittled it down to one. These two, they recorded four albums. They released four albums. I don't think there was uh, a lot of editing with this. And again, quarantine sessions. So, you know, they probably just felt good about all of them. Mm -hmm. Back How it up and send it on its way. I don't know, Bill, what you got for Unlimited Love? Um, actually, not quite the same, but similar stuff as we go through. Um, Black Summer, I thought it had some decent energy as an opener. It had some different guitar stuff going on for the Chili Peppers. But it still just kind of happened. Um, Have Ever After, or Here Ever After... Kind of going back to what they were doing in the original albums with the vocals and stuff. But otherwise, eh, it, it, it's an okay follow-up. Aquatic Mouth Dance, still having come aside that original type vocals coming back for them. Got some funky sound. Actually kind of decent. Uh, not the one. All right, back to what they just did the last album. Poster Child had funky beaten bass going on actually kind of groovy the great apes it, the crescendos that occur in it are the only thing that actually is of interest in that song it's only natural 
Uh, snoozer again. Slow songs are not their specialty whatsoever. And that's what they've got going on here. She's a lover. It happens. These All right, are the so ways. when you guys say slow songs is not their specialty, because there's a couple of times that I've heard of that. They're, are you talking about, like, they are very good at doing ballads, I think. But what do you mean by, like, slow song? It's like a like, slow... Like the slow tempo. Like It's a I slow tempo. It's just like, dude. Once they drop a slow, like, a, a certain BPM, it's not good anymore. Yeah, they definitely need that energy of, you know, at least 110 BPM. I mean, and yeah. the thing is, like, when you get to an but album... Some of these songs have around 70 or 80. They yeah. can do it. They do. can do it good. Like, I mean, they've got good slow songs. Like I under mean, the bridge. They can. But like the, the issue is like but when you're doing it. For the most it, part, they're not. Yeah, for the after, most part, they're not. Song, you're not. I mean, it's okay to have like a 70 or 80 BPM if you follow it up with maybe like a 110 or 120 every once in a yeah. while. Or even a 130. You got it. They'll you do like on three or four one slow four. ones in a yeah. row and it, it drags. I mean, I, yeah. I wish it was only three or four slow ones in a row. <laughs> like it'd be, it would be better. Yacht rock for the 21st century. This is AM gold. And even if even they when don't, they try to get like energetic. There's still this tempo. That underlying it's, like it's still mid tempo. Like they never do yeah. anything on this record, but mid tempo mm-hmm. to slow tempo. Like, yep. Um, what you think? I thought it was decent. Not good, but decent. Uh, Bastards of Light was repetitive shit. White braids and pillow chair. Actually, it it's it's meh, but it's got some. I don't know. It's a good meh going on. Yeah, it's a good meh. I'll take the meh. At this point, meh is acceptable. One way traffic. It's it's not the Ramones. (laughs) It's Jimi Hendrix. (laughs) I mean, one way traffic. It's upbeat, but that doesn't help it at this point. Uh, Veronica, I didn't like anything about that one. Uh, Let him cry. Uh, the funk is back here. That was kind of cool. Cool. I give that funk about four. <laughs> um, instruments had some cool parts in it, but that's really it. Heavy wing. Picking that up, right, Jason? Yep. It's okay. drags, but. It, it, the instruments are the only thing that's decent about it at times. All right. So then, uh, last and I want to say least necessarily, we, we finish it with Tangelo it's acoustic guitar going at that point. I could be wrong, but nine percent sure that's what I was hearing with that. All right, fine. I'll go to sleep then, because that's obviously what you want me to do at this point in time. Um. It's the album happens. I felt it's a step up from the last album. I won't say too much more about it until we get to ranking it, though. Okay. Did everybody talk, or did Hannah? Did Hannah? Did you go? Oh no, I haven't gone over this one yet. All right. Overall, these guys know how to make music. Like they know how to make music. They're all talented musicians. They know it works. They have talent. They they have it. But I feel like there's a little bit of, while still doing the same thing, going a little bit beyond that. I did notice some experimentation in this album. A little bit of something new. Um, probably Flea and Frusciante, probably their influence there. But still, I noticed something going a little bit beyond, I don't know. Um I thought it was a pretty enjoyable album after all. I think that they have matured music wise and like as people at this point, you know, they're, they're older men. They're not kids anymore, but also their audience has matured as well. Like their audience is not kids anymore. Their audience is us. (laughs) You know what I mean? It's they're not. Then why are they still chasing the kids? Oh wait, never mind. I don't know the answer. Yeah. (laughs) You're wrong for that. You're wrong for that, Tim. <laughs> they're, they're chasing kids a different way, Tim. Come yeah, on now. It's, it's, not, it's not predatory anymore. Or so much. I mean, it is a little bit, but not as much as it used to be. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Okay. Um, 
I don't know. I think for me personally, I thought this was a good album for them. And I like the direction it took. Of course and you I like, did. Hot take Hannah. <laughs> I like the way this is going. Um, <laughs> so. Oh, That's what you get. Hand check. <laughs> my thing about this Slap album. Slap yourself there. I know, right? My thing about this album and the one that follows it. Um, I feel like this album was like this is where we're going. This is what we're going to do next. This is the direction we're moving in. We're looking toward the future. And the album after it is more retrospective. Like, this is where we came from. This is our past. And I think that was what they were trying to do here. This is the future. That's the past. And that is reflective not only in the songs they choose for each one, but also look at the album art. That's an, interesting, that's an thing. interesting take. Yeah, that's really the album art uh, says the exact perspective. Same thing. Because like in this one, they're referencing new things that they haven't really... You say that it, it's kind of the same songs before, but it, it is, but like a new twist on it. It's like the songs we've done before, but with like a little new twist. It's moving forward. It's progressive. I like it for them. So going into like the songs individually, Black Summer... I love Black Summer. <laughs> this was a top song contender for me. I really like this one. I felt like it highlighted all four of them individually. Each, All four of them got their own little like spotlight in the song. Which for me, great for an opener, right? Like it just, it gives you like a little t insight into each of the four of them. Right from the get-go. Uh, Here Ever After, that, that's their energy. That's what they need. Um... Aquatic mouth dance. Fucking weird. <laughs> Why is it weird? I don't know. Didn't, See, I like didn't... that one. That reminded me of like some uplift mofo. Yeah, yeah. It vibes. went back to their funk, but those were that was not my favorite time for the peppers. This was not my favorite song. Um, not the one. I really liked the distorted guitar in it. This is where I really started thinking like, there's some Pink Floyd references in here. Like this sounds to me, reminiscent of Pink Floyd, which is good. I love Pink Floyd. That's a good thing. Um, Poster Child. There's some like references in there that like you would only get if you're like a certain age. It's like one of those songs that's like, if you know, you know. I feel like a younger audience, most of this was just like, you know, I don't know if you guys picked up on that. Um, Great Apes was eh. Only Natural was eh. She's a lover. Oh, um, I like that one a lot. I like the bass and the chorus. Those are the two parts that really like, stood out to me. Um, these are the ways. Almost thought I would like this one, but it's just not quite there. Like it started out like I was like, I think I might like this one. I feel like there's some social commentary in there that wasn't very good. Like it's kind of lyrically gone downhill again. Um. Well, he's working on it. What you thinking didn't work for me either. Um, the lyrics were a little bit interesting, but again, he kind of doubles down, being unapologetic for the past. Uh, Bastards of Light. Um, one of the things I noticed was this one was partially in a minor key. They've never really done minor keys before, like in any of their songs, in any of their albums. So I was like, oh, that's interesting. Um, this one was pretty good. I like the melody and everything. White braids. Uh, there was a lot of metaphors in this one. Kind of back to Californication. Likening California to like a scornful lover. I don't know. <laughs> like a love-hate relationship with it. Um, One-way traffic. I like that. Uh, Veronica slowed down the chorus instead of speeding up which I've done a couple times before, but they don't usually do. It's not like their go-to. So it was kind of refreshing on this um, track. Let them cry. Um, once again, disco. <laughs> um, and also, I feel like this is a song that'll get stuck in your head. Like, if you listen to it, you're going to be, like, singing it the rest of the day. Whether you want to or not, it's in there. <laughs> um, Heavy Wing. Um, I think this one should have been the last song. I think this should have been the end. Um, it, I really liked it, and I felt like it wrapped up the album, and I think this one should have been the final track because 
Fingello was like not good. Yeah, I think they should have just cut it off altogether and just left the rest. Anyway, that's my take on that one. I uh, see. I don't know. I'm glad I don't have to guess this one. This one, I'm really <laughs> glad I'm not guessing. Who has yeah, who's guess guessing this one? This one? Ed. Oh, oh me? Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, Jason. Mm. I think you're gonna have this probably like at a number. Ten? No, it's higher than that. We're gonna have it at a number eight. It's higher than that. Six? That's too high. (laughs) I'm gonna put it behind one hot minute because I'd rather listen to P than most of this. This is just, a lot of it's just, I've heard it before. It's just Frushante. It's still better than By The Way. And it's better than the Josh shit. And it's better than those first two albums. And there's good stuff here, but I think One Hot Minute's a little bit more interesting. All right, Tim, I think you will have it at... I can't remember if you liked it or not. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna guess here and say you're gonna have. Was to I like the only it. one that liked this one again? No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, I I say maybe like a number ten. I'm gonna be higher than that. Okay. Um. What about seven? That's what I was thinking. I could see oh, that. What? Yeah. Because it, Jason, that's literally the exact same as yours. No, I can yeah. see it in that's Tim's I... rankings. Oh, our rankings are different. All right, Bill. I think you probably have this at a number nine. Higher. Uh, seven. You don't write down your rankings? I mean, it's not better than Uplift Mofo. We all know that. I do. I got them written down. <laughs> you can, like, hear me flipping pages between my notes. like. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do number seven. Yeah, I'd keep Uplift above that one. And uh, for me, I'm going to put it at number... My, my color coding will tell everything. <laughs> I Let's think see. I'm gonna put I'm gonna I'm gonna put this one at number five. <clears throat> mm, mother's milk is too low. Way too low. As is uplift mofo, and you know what? Oh. You gotta go back and listen to Freaky Styley. Yeah, I don't know. I hope I never have to listen to either of those two again. Uh, Tim, I'm with you on Freaky Style. Hannah really liked this one. I know, Hannah. I'm scared. I don't know. Um, (laughs) Hannah, I think you probably have this at a four. Nope. Higher or lower? Higher. Oh, wow. At a two? I'm going to put it at three. I'll put a it above three. Californication, but not above the other two. Oh, my Lord. <laughs> wow. If you sign up for the Patreon, you can come on the show and give <laughs> us your hot takes as well. That's true. <laughs> All right. We got one more left to go, Canteen Dream. I thought I had some hot takes, but evidently... Hot take Hannah's gonna take that crown from me. So I think I just want something different out of music than the rest of you. So say, Jason, what's your hot take so far? You ain't got shit. Yeah, see, and that's that's I think also the next the thing. one's gonna be the hot take. Yeah, that's what I was talking be... about earlier. It's like 
we like we are emotionally like at least me like growing up like i'm emotionally connected to those four first those albums that i have there you know what i mean yeah, like, same. those yeah, are same. the those are the ones that like mean something to me the the rest of them are okay i'm not saying they're not but those four, you know, so I think it, it's different for Hannah because she's from a different generation, you know? Well, and she I still doesn't... have that emotional connection to a couple of them just because, like, that was my introduction. And they ha- yeah, I do have poor it's... memories yeah, to a lot of those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But also but... listening to the stuff that I haven't listened to before, I'm, like, excited about it. I'm like, oh. oh yeah. And maybe it's just because it's new and it's fresh and I'm like, oh, this is cool. Maybe yeah. that's why I like it better. I don't know. Yeah. Still like the nostalgia though too. <laughs> we'll yeah, one more. I want to revisit in a year, see if our rankings change. Oh, that means oh, we gotta true. listen to them all again though. No, oh, God, yeah. please no. Call the code will tell all. Call the code's gonna tell a lot. <laughs> but I'll give you. I, mean, I, I don't want to know. I, I, again. No, I'll funny, support some like, records. I started, I started this going in before listening to any of it, being like, yeah, I like the Peppers. I listened to the Peppers in high school. I like them. I haven't listened to them since, but I like them. Going into this, listen to the first like half, and I'm like, maybe I don't like them as much as I remember. And then the second half, I'm like, no, I, I definitely like them more now. <laughs> oh god, we'll get to that. We'll get to the wrap up. <laughs> Stick around. Canteen Dream is next. We're gonna do our color code. Top songs after that. Love you guys. Be safe. Make good decisions. Check IDs. Cremation takes its piece of your supply.